This 400 euro DAC is something special in the sense that it does things different from other DACs costing about the same. So the question is, does it perform better? Digital audio technology develops at an incredible rate. If I compare a 10 year old digital to analog converter to a current one, I only have to spend one fifth of the money or less today to get comparable quality. You might wonder what has improved over the years. Well, much has to do with audio hygiene. Keep the noise low, keep the digital signal clean, keep the jitter low and then keep time smearing in the reconstruction filter low. These points can be found back in the device on the test here. This digital to analog converter, DAC for short, has to be connected to an amplifier with speakers or active speakers in which case no separate amplifier is needed. The ISO DAC is then connected to a computer over USB. There can be a laptop as shown here, but also a desktop computer, a Raspberry Pi with USB board or an iOS or Android device. That computer device might hold music files or might get them from streaming services on the web or on a shared volume in your network, like for instance a NAS. If you don't want the computer in the listening room, you can connect it elsewhere in the house connected to your home network. To get the music over the network to the DAC, you use a so-called network bridge, which effectively is a remote USB output for your computer. This is connected to the ISO DAC over a USB cable and to the network over a network cable. Network bridges I reviewed can be found in the playlist Network Bridges on my channel. The aluminium housing measures 81 by 180 by 50 mm and weighs 500 grams. The front holds a power button with below it the Qunas Audio logo. The rear holds a USB B connector with below it a power connector for a 5V 30W switching mode power supply. To the sides we find the left and right analog outputs. This time there is no tour of the inside since the component density was extremely high, the accessibility rather poor while the website gave all the necessary info. This time I will discuss the technique along the line of the introduction I gave earlier. People that watch more of my videos know the importance of a good, clean and powerful power supply. Cheap switching mode power supplies, those that work on any mains voltage, produce a very noisy power feed that will degrade the sound quality of any serious audio device. Unless special care is taken to filter out the noise of the power feed. Filtering of that quality requires many expensive components or will compromise the ability to deliver high current pulses. A way around it is to use the classic linear power supply. That uses a big and heavy transformer made of copper that is also expensive. Batteries are considered to be noise free but most types aren't. Furthermore batteries have a high internal resistance that prevent them from supplying high current pulses. Cunus Audio used to use the better lithium iron phosphate cells but has recently switched to supercapacitors. These have a low energy density but offer a high power density. In layman's terms, they can't store that much energy but are able to deliver very high current pulses. The capacitors that are used are rated at 3 amps but according to Kiyunas Audio you have an instantaneous current delivery headroom of over 120 amps. The supercapacitors are constantly charged by a slightly modified 5 volts 6 amps switching mode power supply. This setup is not only very low noise, it also has very low noise modulation, which is considered by many to be of great importance to the sound quality. An audio class 2 USB connection has the advantage of being asynchronous. 
The data is made available on demand and therefore can be clocked inside the DAC. This is the best way to fight jitter. The disadvantage of USB is that it normally carries a lot of common mode noise, so QNAS audio starts with the USB isolator, followed by a reformatter that delivers a clean signal to the well respected Amanero USB receiver. From there it is sent as an I2S signal to a dual low jitter crystal reclocker. One crystal for 44.1 kHz based and one for 48 kHz based sample frequency. From there it is sent to the very close by mounted DAC chip. The reclocker also clocks the USB receiver. QNAS Audio uses upsampling and a digital filter that has no pre-echo and that's part of the DAC chip, as do many DACs and CD players nowadays. The conversion is then done on a high sampling rate so that the remaining analog part of the reconstruction filter can have a mild slope. The ISO DAC uses no analog filtering. The output of the DAC chip is fed directly to the output terminals. Hyuna's Audio is not the first to take this approach. Already 30 years or more ago there were companies that would modify your CD player by removing the reconstruction filter. Non-oversampling DACs, NOS DACs for short, often take the same approach. The difference is that the ISO DAC uses up to four times upsampling so the noise is far out of the audio band. The advantage is the absence of analog filter coarse time smearing, something that is more and more understood to be of great importance to the sound quality. According to Qunos Audio, any amplifier with an input impedance of a thousand ohms or higher will work fine. There is not much to tell about using the ISO DAC. It does PCM up to 192 kHz 32-bit and only has a USB Type-B input. The USB power is used to operate a relay that switches the power on to the input circuit when the power button on the front is also switched on. This prevents noisy power lines to pollute the DAC. The supercapacitors are always charged regardless of the power state. The Amanero USB receiver supports USB audio class 2 and thus will work directly with all recent operating systems. iOS, Android, macOS and Linux. Windows 10 finally also supports USB audio class 2, so no driver needs to be installed anymore. For all the Windows versions you can download the driver from the QNAS Audio website. This is one of those products that proves that there can be a big discrepancy between measurements and the sound quality. In this case the HF noise completely messes up distortion measurements since the noise played a disproportional part in the measurement figures. Therefore you have to trust your ears and try to be unbiased. That's not always easy as I noticed once more. Initially not understanding the distortion measurements I thought to hear a harshness in the higher regions of violins. So I postponed the review and prepared a message to you that there would be no video due to my vacation. I picked it up after returning and after extensive listening I couldn't understand why I thought to hear harshness in the violins. Something that already fascinated me prior to my vacation was the ease, the suppress, the liveliness with which the music was reproduced. Remember this is a 400 euro DAC that sounds more live than the Chord Mojo. The Mojo sounds somewhat cleaner, more open, but the ISO DAC sounds more relaxed yet expressive and it has a very controlled deep low end and a rather royal yet precise stereo image. Since Kiyuna's audio allows for a home trial period of 30 days, you can easily try it out on your stereo. And if you are in the market for a USB DAC in this price range, I would certainly do so for it's a DAC that makes music. I know better DACs, but certainly not for this money. It is, of course, a matter of taste too, to a certain degree. Or, perhaps better put, every DAC, 
every piece of audio equipment for that matter, is a compromise in sound parameters and money. And I find the balance chosen for the ISO DAC very agreeable. That's it for this week. There will be another video next Friday, as always at 5 pm Central European time if I manage. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media, so you'll be warned when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to all that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If you also feel like supporting my work, the links are in the comments below this video in YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. Whatever you do, enjoy the music.